And once again, welcome to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I am Brody Leafax Moore, and you know I got all the stuff to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. And of course, we have yet another great show for you guys today. On Grid Watch, we are getting the highlights from the EU Spring Split Major. Double Tap takes a look at Metzenaris, and we got all the community goods in the breakout. So right now, Epic and Apple are battling it out in court. Real interesting news, right? For most people, probably not. However, some of the documents that are being released right now because of this lawsuit have a few juicy details. For instance, one of Epic's plans to bring Rocket League to mobile, and no, we're not talking about Sideswipe. We're talking about full-on Rocket League on mobile. I know a lot of people thought about that. Everyone's talked about it. And I really want it to be called Pocket League. If it's not, I'd be sad. But that's interesting nonetheless. I wonder if you'll do aerials by tilting your phone. That'd be annoying, actually. So let's not do that. We'll see how that happens, though. Who knows if that'll ever come to fruition. Let's kick back, though, and relax right now, because we got all the Rocket League action you need for the EU Regional in the Grid Watch. <laughs> The penultimate major of the historic 10th season of the RLCS has come to a close, and Europe has crowned its spring champion after one of the most dominant tournament runs in recent memory. No one was able to stop BDS, the titans of Europe, from cleaving through the competition like a hot knife through butter. But not for a lack of trying, all of the playoff teams put in a phenomenal performance that is a testament to the high median skill in the region. When it comes to the preliminary stage of European tournaments, BDS is almost guaranteed to breeze through with little opposition. Even in events they don't end up winning, the Teflon Trio has the uncanny ability to explode out of the gate and steamroll through the early phases, a pattern which they upheld at the Spring Major with a clean sweep of Group A. Desperation setting in for BS Plus competition. Monkey Moon very calmly guides that off to the corner. This could be dangerous. Get a Chronic Center again? No. Monkey Moon stuffed him, and he almost beat God Smiller right at the end. Whew. Ten seconds left. Freaky and BS Co. have to get downfield. That's not the way. Monkey Moon delaying longer. One more touchdown and that's gonna do it. Team BDS secure entry into the top eight for German Amigos and they end BS competitions run in round five. Group B was more contentious, as two prior regional event winners and two runners-up clashed to earn top seed in the playoffs. Guild Esports, who triumphed over BDS at the last regional, seemed to have the edge at first with a clean sweep against top blokes. However, the momentum was quickly snuffed out by a staunch resistance from SK Gaming and Solary, the latter of whom went on to sweep the group, matching BDS' scoreline in the process. Nine seconds left. Eek's still trying to connect with Yu-Gi-Oh! Astral's already up for it. Him. Here's Farah. <laughs> Back into the midfield, Tox is going to have this ball in his empty corner. He's going to oh, be yeah. able to get boost, but does he? Does Okay, he managed to get in the air with it. Trying to get it past Astral, but he look at this read. Ooh. Closes on it with Shaw set. Zero seconds. Yu kills in the corner to keep it alive. Tox Careful. is going to try and connect with him underneath, but he sells there as well. Down Gotta the catch field it. to nobody. Astral will put it into the ground, and Solary in three games. Take care of SK. 3-0 sweep, man, what a show. The playoffs first round was characterized by extended overtimes. Of the four matches played, every single one featured at least one five minute plus overtime, resulting in some nail biting games, even in the midst of otherwise one-sided sets. Team Vitality, which saw more than half of the games in the seven round set end in OT goals, all but one of which were in Guild's favor, proved positive of their stability under pressure. And uh, just Frenetic. Devo misses not. He's got a chance to shoot. And then Nipposi goes for. Tho takes out Kado. Can he shoot into the corner? Oh! Oh, he's done it for Guild. Their season rolls on. Vitality go out. For the first time since December 2020, Guild take down Vitality. Unfortunately, that tenacity wasn't enough to win their long-awaited rematch with BDS in the semifinals. While they managed to take two games and force one into OT, they ultimately fell to BDS's overwhelming might. On the other side of the bracket, SK and Solary were locked in combat to determine who would have the final shot at taking down BDS in the grand finals. Solary won the first game in an intense OT, but SK answered back with a four-minute OT win of their own, granting them momentum, which put them at match point in no time flat. But this would not be the end of Solary. Forced onto their back foot, they seem to get a second win, taking the next three games back to back to win the match. Yuki onto the backboard. 15 seconds left. Tox is there. Shaw set gets in his way. He 
Pixels rotating around. 10 seconds left. Fair with a miss. Here's Astral to the sky to burn time and look for security. Drops it up against Zeke, though. He's forced to make a save. Yukio against Shulset. Oh, tough time has expired and it slams to the ground. Solary rally back three games straight. And it'll be Solary versus BDS for the grand final. Well, it was almost a foregone conclusion that BDS would take the top spot after such an impressive bracket run. Solary was able to at least put up a fight, forcing one match into overtime and taking another. BDS was simply too strong. And they capped off the last major before the championship with a 4-1 victory. Those aren't easy to do, but he makes it look easy. And BDS are now just a few seconds away from three majors in a row. Vera over to Astral. BDS holding back. They know they've got to go the whole way. That's dropped up to the corner. That will not be on the floor just yet. Monkey Moon, he's missed it. Extra does get hit, oh! but it is going to be put down by Mark. The pieces were coming together, but BDS hold off for three. Yes, three major championships. Next up is the North American Major, marking the end of the spring split. NA is packed with strong teams, but are any of them strong enough to match BDS when international competition eventually resumes? You'll have to watch and decide for yourself. Joining me as almost a regular on the show now at this point, it's Mr. Do-It-All himself, Adam Lawler Thornton joining me. Thank you uh, for joining, man. Miss you, man. Always a pleasure. How you doing, buddy? And do it all myself. I finally have an editor, so it's not all myself. Okay, right? okay. <laughs> You're, you hit the point there where there's too much work to be done. Yeah, I felt like sleeping like, this is an okay thing. So, yeah, we, uh, we got an editor. We're going to talk about some Rocket League as well, but I want to give people an insight into... Um, just uh, what life has been like for you recently because I know um, as someone that's been working on Twitch you've been working on YouTube you've been working on casts uh, and other stuff too so I, I know there's a lot on the line here uh, that you're, you're working on and somehow you're managing to, to get uh, your keep yourself in, in shape you've been working out you've been on a good diet lately and I find that very difficult as a gamer and I think it's a good chance for us to maybe get some insight, uh, some tips and how that process has been going for you and what you've been up to. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Um, I mean, I can't start without, you know, saying thanks to my trainer. Uh, you obviously know him, uh, Kugo. Uh, Kugo the Mighty, if you don't know him, is a big CSGO YouTuber now going into like fitness. He's trying to get his pro card for the very first time, but like, I mean, Kugo is just an anagram for, for Goku and that's pretty much what he looks like, man. Like the guy's massive. And um, yeah, he's he's awesome. Uh, keeps me motivated, even you know, cross country and you know, weekly check-ins and stuff like that helps. I want to talk about BDS winning, and I want to talk about what's going to happen with this region going forward. Because obviously, at this point, someone has to find the change. Someone has to find it. And it sounded, it seemed like Guild was almost on point. It seemed like they started to figure out multiple times they took them down, but again, over this weekend, they lost to them again, and BDS managed to find a way through. What are we going to see in the region? Is it going to be a team that we already have? Maybe it's Guild? Or do you think teams are going to start building themselves around the pure, simple idea of beating BDS? I mean, if they would actually play more than 10 hours a week, maybe. I mean, shots fired, but like Europe, and this isn't just a Europe thing. Europe has always scrimmed a little bit less and they play and practice a little bit differently. Vitality is the biggest culprit here. I think the only team that can actively compete with BDS is Vitality, right? And I'm, I'm actually putting out a video here soon about like why you, some of these kids need to put respect on KDOP's name. Like people are calling for KDOP's head, saying he needs to retire, and then he's falling behind. It's like, dude, the guy's been to every grand final since season three. Like, and I'm not talking like just attending the world championship. I mean, getting to the title bout to fight for the, like lifting the trophy. And people are like, yeah, he's, he's washed. I'm like, no, he just doesn't care, man. Like when you're that goaded on the sticks and you don't get to lift the trophy, you kind of lose motivation. And that's being seen across the entire platform. I, sometimes you gotta light those fires out, and, and it's not far from the truth, you heard it. Even Kadop himself said they felt that they weren't putting enough and taking it seriously enough. They felt that, that uh, and that's why this, this slump was happening. And that may as well just be the truth here that teams aren't putting in. And I think even Extra called it out when we interviewed him on the show, was he was saying that uh, if teams like Guild put in a lot of work they're going to be just as good as them. And Extra made sure to say, we're not the best in the world. I think what he was subtly probably subtly saying to them is, you guys aren't working as hard as ours. That's the only difference here. So that might be a fair statement, Lala, that you... I, I try not to speak too many falsities. I try to do my homework and like, just by watching the eye test, man, like prime example, you see all these bubble teams in Europe that keep climbing up. And I will admit, 
NA definitely works harder than EU. That is something that the reason why, I mean, Turbo doesn't want to go back is one, because NA works harder and two, they pay better, obviously, but that's the main reason why he's staying. But ultimately, like, you look at it and there's a reason why there's some consistency in North America. The people at the top stay at the top because they grind and they have their mental breaks. You see what happens with Space Station when they feel a little bit laxed. They fall off. They battle through the lower bracket the entire time. Uh, coincidentally, right after Rettles calls out BDS, but like that stuff obviously happens when you take off. And this is a game that's super mechanic intensive and you can't. And I can't imagine what it's like for the mental side where you are like, yeah, it's just rinse and repeat. It's mundane. It's the same thing with no reward, no land, no international. Don't see my buddies. And I get it. I get it. It's got to be really frustrating. I can't imagine being a, you know, 16, 17 year old kid and you take away the regular life of seeing my friends at school, plus all the fun stuff I look forward to for the world championships. Um, it's got to take its toll. I'm proud of Justin for coming out and saying what he did about the mentality stuff and dealing with depression and uh, taking off for IWO because IWO as well, even though it's called the Intel World Open, is a yet another regional event. So yeah, I can't, I can't imagine what it's doing, but you're seeing these bubble teams that are hungry, trying to get an org, trying to get signed, and either now SK Gaming, you see German Amigos, you see these teams really rising up. And I think part of the reason why is because the top tier EU is just straight up lazy right now. Waller, thank you so much for joining me again and I uh, hope to talk to you soon. The amount of pressure that they're feeling uh, is just very tough to play at the normal oh, rate. Devo. That BDS. Oh, oh, that's a great pass. oh my goodness, the pass from Devo down. Go to put it away. That's a highlight for sure. Oh, that's incredible. Devo's like, here you go. Easiest shot of your life. Who's rotating now? There are they two off oh, the map. Puts onto the backboard. They need a follow up. Here's Tox. Oh, Ooh. look at the cover. Here's Yukio in for a third opportunity. Farah gets it away. Shaw set now with a full take of boost looking for the counter attack. Gets it on the top of one. Just needs to tap it under. Oh, what a counter attack. We're tied up. Astral recognizing the danger. Able to make two big stops on his goal line. Top of the bottom didn't get it. Ended up getting the boost anyway. Nearly led to a goal. I liked it a lot. Oh, oh, it does lead to a goal in the end anyway. k -Dob is aided, admittedly, by Mark Bayet. In the end, though, that's a Vitality game win. All the way downfield, Bacasio controls it up. Over to Archie. Oh, oh it's my goodness. goodness! What on earth was this? Oh, he almost hit it down to the ground, and thank the heavens, Cassio was sitting there to scoop underneath. Just give me some hot shots, some hot pockets, and a little breakout, and I'm a happy Rocket Leaguer. Speaking of breakout, that's what we're doing right now. First up, S. Fontaine, 921, got sick of his team's plays being broken up, so he did something about it. Classy. A man of my own taste. I love demos. Rocket Sledge would also be your friend. Anyways, up next is Buzzkill, who uses magic. So I think the worst thing about that is that we didn't actually get a finish. That was a training shot at the end. I guess it went in, but I, I, I feel uh, un...
fulfilled by this. And I also have a note from the producer. Brody, what the hell is happening here? <laughs> that is called a ceiling dash, and it is very, very difficult. Whenever you dash under the ceiling, it gives you a bit of traction. And if you get the suspension just right, you can wave dash back the other way, and the traction stays on. Very, very difficult to do. Don't even try doing it. It's it's honestly not even, it doesn't even do anything for you. But it's, looks cool though. Looks cool. Moving on. Lurifax brings us some hoops content. Don't you love it when a teammate just lines up a pass so perfectly to your car that it makes it look like you did all the work? Me too. Now our next one comes from Imagine Wagon 82 who got sent to another dimension. Don't know what you did to piss off the rocket gods, but good luck getting out of there. Finally, our last one here is Cafe Pinguino, and they gave their friend a Hot Wheels mini and then got this back. say that's a little much and a little intense but I also have a little mini shrine of rocket cars behind me too so I can't say anything anyways that's it for this segment we got to move on because coming up next double tap details the career of Metzanaris often in esports it's only the big winners who become immortalized but let's not forget that just making it onto the world stage is an achievement worth celebrating in of itself especially if you've made it as far and as many times as Finnish Rocket League all-star Metzenaris from the first time his tires touched the field to the first time he seized victory at a major tournament and beyond this is one European Titan who deserves respect and admiration Metz made his transition from casual Rocket League fan to pro Rocketeer early in the game's life joining Ariel along with Continuum and Pixel. Despite the team's strength and pedigree, they would fail to qualify for the first RLCS season. A choke Metzenaris attributes to nerves. Realizing that the best remedy for nervousness is practice, Metz hit the grind. And the very next year, his labors bore fruit. Qualifying for the Season 3 European Regional, Metz and the rest of his new team fought hard and made it as far as the playoffs. There's a chance Metz, a little bit wide on the shot, a lot to pull up. The rear sets someone up for Magnus. He just tries to at least get a 50-50, keeping the pressure on for his team. As Penta struggling now on defense to keep this one away and miss from Mummy. Sets him out of the play. A chance there for a bounce shot. Two Mets. The pass, play, and it's in, but only one goal, but also only one minute left. After three minutes and almost 45 seconds, we finally see our first goal, and it comes from finally someone seeing consistent pressure on their side. Team Secrecy doing a really good job of rotating and pressuring, and it finally pays off for them. While they would end up getting sent home in the very first round by reigning world champions Flipside Tactics, they didn't go down without a fight. Metzenaris and co. managed to take things to the very last possible game in what he would describe as the best series of his career thus far, just barely falling short of qualifying for Worlds in his first year of league play. Cox is starting to get these shots where they need to be, but a defense strong from Resonant is keeping them at bay. Almost a second touch from a lot there. He tried to get the chip towards the net. Metz will put it on though. Metz! Cox can't keep it out! and Metz finds the dirtiest of angles. They are playing exactly the way they need to against Flipside Tactics. Metz getting the second touch. Honestly, both Cooks here and Marky just let him. They knew he was going to get it, but they did not expect a shot from the angle just under the crossbar. Perhaps this brush with greatness lit a fire inside of him. As the very next season, Metz, now part of Method, pulled out all the stops, finishing second in Europe and ascending to Worlds for the first time. Struggling on the wrong side of the field. Here's Magnus, he's got Metzenaris to aim for. Metz will go for the shot, he's gonna find it! Bottom right hand corner, Method will be our first team in the regional finals. And a team play to end it all. Magnus out to Metzenaris who finds a tight angle. Pashi trying to keep that gap as small as he could with the post, but it won't be small enough. He'll find it, he'll thread it through the needle, and Method will take this series moving forward 
in the European final. In a series of close games, Method blazed the trail all the way to winner's finals, where they would face off with Gale Force Esports. Tragically, this was one Goliath that David just couldn't fell. Despite a lower bracket recovery leading to a grand finals rematch, Method went home in second place. Still a very impressive result for their first Worlds. Metzenaris continued to place highly at subsequent World Championships, securing third place finishes at the season's five and six finals. Finally, in 2018, he was able to go the distance and come out of a major tournament on top, namely E-League's most recent Rocket League Cup, triumphing over a number of fellow top tier players to win the grand prize. Act like you belong, and I ignite. Certainly belongs. With 10 seconds left, we damn girls. This ball sails back and forth. A hard fought battle this weekend. A lot of tough matchups. It was not easy by any stretch, but we damn girls are your E League 2018 champions against Cloud9. A struggle, the story of this team, unsigned, still one of the best teams in all of Rocket League, with it has to be a chip on their shoulder. They come out here, they prove to everybody what kind of team they are, what, how, what kind of metal, and you've heard Achieves Wave Punk, Achieves definitely likes to say it, Moxie. That is this team, that's Remco, that's I Ignite. That's Metzenaris. While Metzenaris has flown under the radar in years since, his repeated high placements and consistently good performance has cemented a legacy worthy of praise. Coming within spitting distance of the world champion title even once is impressive, but only those who put in the work like Metzenaris get to do it again and again. I think the greatest thing about Metzenaris is for sure just his positive attitude whenever you talk to him. And one of my favorite memories I ever shared with him was of course at, at season five land when we sat up on stage and the audience just started cheering Metzenaris and you saw his face light up. That's a moment that a lot of people don't get to experience. So seeing his face light up right beside him, you know this, this guy loves what he does and it's cool to see him still competing to this day. But that is all the time that we have for today's show, but you can check out more of our content, you know it, on YouTube and of course on Twitter at Squad State. Thank you guys so much for watching and for a little overtime action. That's right, here's your weekly backfire.